Welcome back to Lab Cyber, and today's video is going to be a very, very important one because I'm going to be discussing the top five mistakes that I see people who are trying to launch their careers in cybersecurity very often make. Now, I'm able to make this video because I do actually coach hundreds and thousands of students on how to launch their careers in cybersecurity, and I very often see them making the same types of mistakes. So, hopefully, by the end of this video, you would have learned how not to launch a career in cybersecurity and also gain some useful tips on how to actually break into the field of cybersecurity successfully. Now, if you're a returning subscriber, I do apologize for the very obvious change in the quality of the video. I'm actually making this video in a hotel room here in Tokyo, Japan. I'm not back home in Thailand where I have my regular studio, so I do apologize for the change in the background, but hopefully you will find this video useful all the same. So without wasting any more time, let's jump into the five mistakes, the top five mistakes that people who are trying to launch their careers in cybersecurity very often make. Now, the very first mistake is going to be a very obvious one, but trust me when I say that so many people make this particular mistake and that's not having an actual plan. Most people, all they think about is, oh, I want to break into cybersecurity. I want to launch my career in cybersecurity. I want to get into cybersecurity. Okay, fine. But what is the end goal? What is your end objective? Where do you see yourself two years from now? Where do you see yourself five years from now? What particular kind of role do you want to occupy within the field of cybersecurity? What kinds of things do you actually want to do on a daily basis? Do you want to be an analyst? Do you want to be an investigator? Maybe you want to be a manager. Maybe you want to be an ethical hacker. Like people don't actually think about these things. All they think about is, oh, I need to launch my career in cybersecurity. Uh, uh, what programming language do I need to learn? Uh, what certification should I acquire? Okay, I'm going to acquire the certification or apply for entry-level jobs in cybersecurity and get into cybersecurity that way. No, you want to have an actual plan. Think of it this way, right? If you get into a car and you start driving, obviously, you want to have a destination in mind. Otherwise, if you're just driving aimlessly, well, guess what? You're going to keep on driving aimlessly until the gas runs out. So you don't want to make that mistake. Have an actual plan on how you're going to break into cybersecurity and also where you want to be two, five years, or maybe even 10 years from now in the field of cybersecurity. Now, this leads me very nicely into the second biggest mistake, and that is the fact that most people don't realize just how truly vast the field of cybersecurity is. Listen, I've had so many people constantly ask me this particular question, this one key question, and that is, oh, what programming language is best for cybersecurity? And then I will ask them, okay, uh, why do you want to learn programming? And then they'll say, oh, well, they heard it's a very useful skill in cybersecurity. Well, yes and no. It is a useful skill if you want to go into certain kinds of roles or fields within cybersecurity. But for the most part, programming is a skill that is not necessary. There are so many non-technical roles within cybersecurity that don't require you to have any programming skills. You have technical roles and you also have non-technical roles. And there are even many technical roles that don't require programming skills like forensics, being a SOC analyst. You don't need to be a programmer to be able to occupy these positions. Now, don't get me wrong. If you know how to program, it's an obvious advantage. It can definitely help you, but it is not mandatory that you learn how to program. And I'm bringing this up because again, most people, all they think about when they think of cybersecurity is, oh, ethical hacking, pen testing, and programming. They forget that we have cyber management, we have cyber law, we have cyber forensics, we have security analysis. There are so many roles within cybersecurity. It's such a vast industry at this point. So take a step back, look at all the various types of roles within cybersecurity and ask yourself, which of these roles or which of these fields do I actually find interesting, okay? Hmm, do I like being an investigator? Maybe I want to go into forensics. There's the field for that. Or maybe I have a background in law. 
I could go into cyber law. Maybe I have a background in management. I can go into cyber management. So take a step back and understand that cybersecurity is such a massive field. It's not all about ethical hacking or programming. There is so much more to cybersecurity than those two. So realize that cybersecurity is a massive field and then choose one field that you want to specialize in and then go for it. Now, the third biggest mistake, and this is easily going to be the most controversial take in this video because I've had a lot of people disagree with me, but I still firmly believe that one of the biggest mistakes you can make is acquiring certifications just for the sake of acquiring them. What I mean here is you have people who think that the more certifications they have, the better. That isn't true. You want to prioritize quality over quantity. What I mean here is this. Say, for example, you've decided that, okay, I want to go into cyber management. I want to become a manager in the field of cybersecurity. Guess what? You trying to acquire the Certified Ethical Hacking Certification isn't going to make that much sense. Yes, you can argue that, well, if I have the Certified Ethical Hacking Certification, then I will know how to better manage Certified Ethical Hackers in my team. That might be true, but for the most part, there are other certifications that are designed specifically for managers within cybersecurity. So why waste your time going for certifications that may help you as opposed to certifications that will actually directly aid you in getting that role that you want. Remember, certifications aren't easy. You have to prepare for them. You have to read. You have to pass the exam. And most of the certifications cost money. They're not cheap. So invest your time and money wisely. Once you've decided that, okay, this is the field within cybersecurity I want to specialize in, start targeting the certifications that are tailored specifically to that role. You have certifications for ethical and pen testing. You have certifications for forensics. You have certifications for cyber management. Be smart when it comes to acquiring your certifications. Don't just acquire them because, oh, the more certifications I have, the more attractive I'm going to be to the prospective employer. That isn't always true. So please be strategic acquire certifications with purpose. Now, the fourth biggest mistake, and this will typically involve the actual job interview process. The mistake here is not keeping in touch with the current events within cybersecurity. Listen, cybersecurity is a field that is constantly evolving. You will have new types of cyber attacks emerging constantly, new types of cyber defenses, and of course, Many companies getting hacked almost on a daily basis or big news within the cybersecurity industry. Only a few weeks ago, we heard about the ransomware gang Lockbit getting shut down by the uh, UK National Crime Agency. You need to be aware of events like this. Why? A few weeks ago, I actually had a chat with an HR employee. She is directly responsible for employing uh, people on the cybersecurity. And she said, one of the tactics they typically use within the interview process is they will ask the candidate about recent events that occurred. Say, for example, uh, you had Microsoft getting hacked, right? A couple of weeks ago, they might say, well, what did you think about Microsoft getting hacked? They will ask you, and then if you don't know or you never heard about that, you're going to look at them like, uh, sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Right there, you've blown your chance of getting that job you're going to be disqualified immediately because the HR, they expect you to be somebody who is keeping track of what's actually occurring within the field of cybersecurity. Because again, it is a field that is constantly evolving, constantly changing. To be a bona fide cybersecurity, cybersecurity professional, you need to know what the latest trends are. And the easiest way is to keep track of it on social media, whether it's YouTube, Subscribe to channels that talk about cybersecurity, news, and events. Or whether you use Facebook or LinkedIn, there are groups that discuss cybersecurity on a daily basis. Subscribe to those groups. Join those groups. Maybe you use Instagram or Twitter or X, as it's called now. Follow people who talk about cybersecurity. This is one of the easiest ways to keep track of what's happening 
on a daily basis even in the field of cybersecurity. So when you go for the job interview and they ask you about a major cyber attack that occurred a few days ago, you, you'll be able to tell them that, yeah, I heard about that. What actually happened here was, you know, blah, 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 blah. That way they will know that, okay, this is somebody that actually keeps track of latest events and you will have a much better chance at getting that role. Now, the fifth and final mistake I see people very often make is not having enough of a diverse skill set. This is applicable to people who don't have any background in IT whatsoever and are trying to launch their career in cybersecurity. Say, for example, the person who used to work in finance or, or used to be an economist or a chef or whatever, and now they want to get that entry-level job in cybersecurity. It's going to be much harder for that person as opposed to somebody who already has work experience within the field of IT, maybe the way a programmer or the work in the working or the way a web developer. Such people already have some work experience within the field of IT and they would have an advantage over the other person who doesn't have a background whatsoever in IT. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because getting that entry level job within cybersecurity can be very difficult. I know this may be something you don't want to hear, but I have to tell you the truth. Yes, you can have companies advertising, oh, it's an entry level position, no work experience required. But guess what? If you go for that job interview and there's another candidate who has some relevant working experience, even if it's in a different field in IT, if it's in programming or networking or database management or whatever, they already would have an advantage over you who doesn't have any relevant working experience whatsoever within the field of IT. So here's what I want you to do. Start acquiring skills in other fields of IT. There are four major fields that I want you to focus on. Networking, web development, database management, and then also programming, all right? Here's the thing. I'm not asking you to become an expert in any one of these fields. Just know something about them. When it comes to networking, understand what an IP address is, what a MAC address is. Understand the differences between switches and routers, know what protocols are, know what the DNS system is, and so on. Learn the basics of, of all these other fields. Why? Because when you learn the basics and you acquire some skills in these other fields of IT, instead of getting stuck with constantly being denied that entry-level job within cybersecurity, you can apply for roles, entry-level roles in other fields of IT. I know that's not your, 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 your main goal. You want to go into cybersecurity, fine. But if you're constantly getting denied, it might be because you don't have any relevant working experience within the field of IT. So here's what you here's what you want to do. Apply for that entry-level job within networking. Apply for that entry-level job in web development, okay? Get your feet in the door. Acquire some work experience in that field. And guess what? Your resume is going to start becoming more attractive to prospective employers because you are getting work experience in another field of IT that can significantly boost your chances of getting that job within cybersecurity. You don't have to spend uh, one year, two years in networking or web development. Get that job. But as you're working on that job, keep applying for the other entry-level jobs within cybersecurity that, that you're interested in. The difference here, though, is that your resume is going to become more attractive because you're currently working in another field of IT. You're currently acquiring some experience, some relevant working experience that can help you get that entry-level job within cybersecurity. I hope this makes sense. And by the way, just in case you're interested in learning the basic skills in other fields of IT, I do have a course that will actually teach you them. I'll have the link uh, to the course in the description box below, just in case you are interested, be sure to check it out. And that's it for today's video. My top five mistakes that people often make when trying to launch their careers within cybersecurity. And I hope you found this video useful and very, very helpful as well. If you have any comments or questions, I'd love to hear from you. Put them now in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them as soon as I can. If you're new here to the channel, welcome. My name is Alex. Welcome to Lab Cyber, where I discuss all things related to cybersecurity. If you enjoy content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And of course, share the video with anyone whom you feel might benefit from it. And to my returning subscribers, once again, I do apologize for the change in the background and the video quality, but 
I'm in a hotel room in Tokyo. I don't have that many options. I don't have access to an actual studio. So I do apologize for that. But hopefully you enjoyed the video all the same. Stay safe out there and I'll talk to you next time. Cheers.